Welcome to this presentation of the progress to date on the Guruk Ferry Terminal Infrastructure Project. My name is Graham McGinty and I'm the Project Manager for Caledonia Maritime Assets Limited, or CMAL, as they will generally be referred to here. In this presentation, we summarise the work that has been ongoing in developing options for the infrastructure at Guruk. There will be a short introduction that sets the parameters of this project and how it sits within a wider programme of projects. We'll then take you through the baselining exercise that looks to identify the current issues with the infrastructure, discuss the project requirements and look at how objectives for the project were set along with the criteria to assess these options. The main part of the presentation will take you through the development of six options that meet the requirements along with the appraisal of those options against the assessment criteria, arriving at a currently preferred option. Finally, there's a short summary on the next steps of the project. It's important to note that at this stage of the project, the designs are outlined with much of the details still to be developed. However, we are at an appropriate stage to seek the views of the public on both the process followed and the resulting preferred option. On the website, you'll find a feedback form where you can provide comments and these will be considered both in finalising the preferred option and in the further development of that option. Alongside this overview presentation, there are supplementary presentations that provide additional detail on individual elements of the process. While it's not necessary to watch these supplementary presentations to understand the process and the options selected, they are available if you're looking for more detailed information. The Guruk Infrastructure Project has been project managed by CMAL, assisted through this first outline business case stage by engineering consultants Mott McDonald. The Infrastructure Project is part of a programme of projects coordinated through a working group chaired by CMAL on behalf of Transport Scotland. The working group comprises representatives from Transport Scotland, Argyll and Butte Council, Inverclyde Council, CalMac, CMAL Vessels and CMAL Harbours and Engineering. The group generally meet every four to six weeks, although more regular meetings and technical workshops take place as required. The programme of projects comprises the provision of the new passenger vessels for the Guruk to Danun and Guruk to Kilcreggan services, managed by the CMAL Vessels team, the infrastructure projects at Danoon and Kilcreggan, managed by Agile and Butte Council, along with this Guruk infrastructure project. Although all these projects fall under one programme and are coordinated through the working group, they are currently at different stages and therefore the initial public engagements will be carried out separately. This session is for the infrastructure improvements at Guruk only, and while it's appreciated there's an overlap between the projects, it would assist us greatly in taking on board your comments if you can restrict them to the Guruk infrastructure only. The infrastructure at Guruk is ageing and largely beyond economic repair. A recent investment in a link span has extended its life for a period, but to maintain the port and provide the required services into the future, there needs to be a significant investment in the infrastructure. The terminal provides a number of functions, both as a general port and more specifically in connection with the ferry network, and the infrastructure project has to consider all of these functions in selecting a preferred option for development. The main functions include the provision of operational berths for the scheduled ferry services to Dunoon and Kilcreggan, an alternative mainland berth for the Ardrossan and Weems Bay services when diverted, and the provision of lay-by berths for vessels including the ferries when required. The project will provide replacement infrastructure to meet the requirements of both current and planned vessels. It's this infrastructure project and the process in arriving at our current preferred option that we are seeking your views on. Once the final option has been selected, the detailed design phase will commence and, in due course, further public engagement events will be held. Mary Cairns, a marine engineer with Mott MacDonald, will now take you through the rest of the presentation. Thanks very much for the introduction, Graham. My name is Mary Cairns and I'm a civil engineer working for consultant Mott MacDonald in Glasgow. I'll be taking you through the remainder of the material for the public engagement. Um, this main presentation provides a summary of all the work that we've completed uh, on the project to date including how we have selected the current preferred option and how we're looking for your views and feedback. There are an additional four mini presentations which will provide supplementary information on specific parts of the project, should you wish to view these in addition to the main presentation. This slide provides a summary of the business case methodology which has been completed at Guruk. The first step was the strategic business case. This was completed by Transport Scotland um, during 2019 and 2020, where the reasons for making a change at Guruk Ferry Terminal were defined. 
The next step is the outline business case, which we have nearly completed for the Gurek infrastructure. The main purpose eh, of an OBC is to appraise a range of options and to identify a preferred option which will meet the project aims and demonstrate value for money. The last stage is the final business case, which is typically completed alongside the procurement process. If you'd like more information eh, about the business case process and our methodology and programme for the Gurek OBC, please take a look at public engagement presentation number two. This slide provides a summary of the engagement we are undertaking for the outline business case. You can see here that the main client for the project is CMAL. CMAL own the terminal infrastructure at Gurukh and the vessels which operate from there. As Graham mentioned, we meet regularly with the project working group to discuss each stage of the project and to agree on key project decisions. In addition to this, we have a project reference group which includes wider stakeholders and the community councils. We met with the reference group in May this year to provide an in-depth update on the outline business case and to seek their feedback on the options developed. We are also currently engaging with wider stakeholders and completing this public engagement exercise to explain how we have reached the current preferred option and to seek your views on this. As Graham mentioned, there will be a Q&A form at the end of this presentation and we would really appreciate if you could fill this out. For the study, we have developed a range of options for the infrastructure at Gurukh, all of which can accommodate these in-scope vessels. Each option must maintain the alternative mainland port facilities for the Arran and Butte services should these be diverted to Gurukh. Each option can also accommodate the current and future vessels used for the passenger only services to Danoon and Kilcreggan. The CML vessels team are currently working on the design of the new passenger vessels and more information on this part of the wider project will follow in due course. It's worth noting here that the timetabling of scheduled services to Danoon and Kilcreggan is not part of this Guruk infrastructure OBC. I'll now provide more information on the first steps of the project, which included confirming the project requirements, baselining the infrastructure, setting transport planning objectives and revisiting the STAG criteria. Each of the options that we've developed need to meet a number of project specific requirements. These have been set by Transport Scotland and CMAL, with an additional list of operators requirements as set by CalMac Ferries. These requirements include the ferry terminals to remain on the same site, so we haven't looked at alternative locations. We can't make any changes to the railway line or the train station. We should aim to ensure that the scheduled services to Danoon and Kilcreggan aren't disrupted during construction. The new infrastructure should minimise weather-related disruption at the berths. We need to maintain National Cycle Route 75 through the terminal. Where possible, the passenger services should be located to the north of the site to allow quicker connection to onwards travel. The infrastructure must be capable of accommodating the larger rural vessels as an alternative mainland port. And we need to ensure that we accommodate CalMax operator requirements, including their HQ building, storage facilities, car parking and passenger waiting rooms. At Guruk, a summary of the main problems include the life expiry of the infrastructure. So the key walls are in poor condition. The link span and the supporting structures have been recently refurbished, but these have a limited residual life. The terminal building has also been recently refurbished, but the CalMac warehouse requires refurbishment and there are a number of disused assets across the terminal. In terms of the berth facilities, the existing rural berth is not ideal for the Arran vessel and it's unsuitable for larger vessels which will eventually use Guruk. The fendering is not suitable for smaller vessels and the berth is challenging to use in easterly conditions. In terms of access, the current access is not suitable for use by all. There are boat steps which require regular maintenance 
and the crew access arrangements are less than desirable. There's also conflict when a rural vessel is using the link span berth. In terms of the landside facilities, the walking distance for passengers to onwards travel um, are longer than desirable and the pedestrian route throughout the terminal could be better defined. There's a lack of parking and the marshalling is undersized for the current vessels. And the resulting implications are, in terms of reliability, and we've got easterly conditions which can impact uh, the reliability of the passenger service. And for resilience, if larger vessels are, are diverted to Guruk, this can impact on the scheduled passenger services as the existing infrastructure limits the size and number of vessels which can operate from Guruk at any one time. For more information on the baselining exercise, please refer to presentation number three. An important part of the OBC process is to define our transport planning objectives. These were created and agreed by the project team and they are specific to Guruk. These objectives aim to flip the problems identified on their heads and allow us to score the options that we develop against how well they can meet each transport planning objective. The TPOs for this study, um, TPO 1 relates to providing new terminal infrastructure to accommodate all of the in-scope vessels for the next 60 years. TPO 2 relates to improving the reliability and punctuality of the scheduled passenger services to Dunoon and Kilcreggan. TPO 3 relates to improving access to sustainable travel links. TPO 4 relates to minimising the impacts to service and limiting any disruption during construction works. TPO 5 relates to the future use of the terminal and in ensuring that our designs are flexible for potential future requirements. And TPO 6 relates to improving traffic flows in the terminal and in the adjacent road network. It's worth noting here that the project team felt that some of the TPOs were more important than others. For this reason, we agreed a weighting for each TPO, which we scored out of 10. We will provide more information on this in a few slides time. If you would like more information on how the TPOs were set and how we applied the weightings, please see presentation number four. As part of the business case, options must also be appraised against the STAG criteria. STAG stands for Scottish Transport Appraisal Guidance. The STAG criteria are predefined, set by Transport Scotland, and they allow us to appraise the options against items like the environment, safety, the economy, integration and accessibility and social inclusion. You will see the scoring of the options against the TPOs and the STAG criteria later in this presentation. I'll now talk you through the options that we have developed for the infrastructure. I'll mention here that a range of high level options were generated at the initial stages of the project. The project team determined that a number of these could not deliver the project objectives or meet the TPOs and so these were sifted out. Six infrastructure options remained and these were developed in more detail as I'll show you in the next slides. On each drawing we've got our proposed layouts for the terminal infrastructure to accommodate the alternative mainland port facility and the passenger only service. I've also included a, a schematic of the footprint of each option within the wider bay at Guruk at the bottom of the slide. I'll provide a summary of the layout of each option and I'll work my way from north to south um, as I'm describing each layout. So option one, uh, we've got the new AMP berth to the north of the site. We've got our new AMP passenger waiting room to the north. We have got our marshalling area here, um, our dedicated AMP pickup and drop off point. We've got our Dunoon and Kilcreggan passenger infrastructure to the centre of the site. We've got new CFL operational facilities and passenger waiting room. We've got our, our new CFL headquarters to the far south. 
and we've got some additional car parking. For option two, we've got the alternative mainland port berth to the north. Um, this is on an area of reclaimed land. Uh, we've also got the marshalling uh, split over two areas. So we've got our car marshalling here and then our HGV marshalling here. Um, we have got the Danoon Kilcreggan passenger service to the centre of the site. We've got our new CFL operational facilities and passenger waiting room to the centre, our new CFL headquarters to the far south and car parking. For option three, we've got our Danoon and Kilcreggan passenger service infrastructure to the north of the site. Depending on the conditions at the berth, which will be confirmed at detailed design stage, we may need a breakwater to provide shelter. We've got our new CFL operational facilities and passenger waiting room to the north. We've got a new CFL HQ building combined with the AMP passenger waiting facilities to the centre. We've got the AMP link span to the far south. We've got our marshalling and car parking. For option four, again, we've got the Danoon and Kilcreggan passenger service infrastructure to the north with the potential for a breakwater should this be required. We've got new CFL operational facilities and passenger waiting room to the north. We've got the AMP berth to the centre with the link span shown here. We've got our marshalling to the centre of the site and additional car parking to the south. For option five, we've got the Danoon and Kilcreggan passenger service infrastructure to the north, again with the potential to add a breakwater should this be required for shelter. We've got the new CFL operational facilities and passenger waiting room to the far north of the site. For this option, we would be maintaining the existing CFL headquarters and AMP passenger waiting facilities in the existing building. Then we've got the alternative mainland port berth for the larger vessels to the centre of the site. We've got marshalling to the south and car parking spread across the site. Lastly, for option six, we've got the Danoon and Kilcreggan passenger service infrastructure to the north of the site. But we've also got the alternative mainland port berth for the larger vessels to the north. We've got the new CFL operational facilities and passenger waiting room to the far north. And again, with this option, we would be using the existing CFL HQ and AMP waiting facilities in the existing building. Then we've got our marshalling to the south of the site and our car parking to the centre of the site. This part of the presentation provides a summary of the appraisal of these six options against our transport planning objectives and our STAG criteria. The aim of this part of the project was to identify a preferred option for the infrastructure at Guruk. The appraisal that we complete as part of the business case uses a seven point scale ranging from major positive to major negative. The final scores for each option have been agreed with CMAL and with the Project Working Group for Guruk. This slide is a summary of the appraisal of the six options against the transport planning objectives. TPO1, this considers provision of appropriate terminal infrastructure for the in-scope vessels. The project team felt that options three, four and five didn't score well against TPO1 as the, lay the layout of the terminal is considered to be more difficult for vessels to use when compared to the existing layout at Guruk. For TPO2, the scheduled passenger service facilities are all considered to be better than the existing layout. The project team agreed that option one scores the best for this TPO as it completely separates the facilities for the passenger services and the larger vessel service. For TPO3, Options which provide the greatest improvement to access to onwards travel are options three, four, five and six, as these provide the passenger service to the north of the terminal closest to the train station. 
For TPO4, these scores are based on the anticipated amount of disruption to Guruk during the construction works. Options 2, 4, 5 and 6 will result in the AMP facility not being available at Guruk for at least part of the construction works. For TPO5, options 1 and 5 score best as they provide the most flexibility for future development at Guruk. And lastly, TPO6, options 5 and 6 score best as the passenger facilities are provided furthest to the north of the terminal and passengers are required to cross less roads in comparison to other options when using the terminal. The weightings for each TPO are shown on the right hand side of the screen. So these reflect the importance of providing infrastructure which is safe to use from a navigational perspective and also providing a reliable service. The overall score for each option is shown at the bottom of the slide. From this, we can see that options 1 and 6 scored best against the TPOs. This slide is a summary of the appraisal of the six options against the STAG criteria. So the first criteria considers the extent of the environmental impact of the options. In terms of the scoring against the environment STAG criteria, option 2 scores worst as it has the most amount of land reclamation. It's worth noting that all options score negatively here as there may be risks to the environment associated with any construction works. These risks will be identified and managed through the appropriate permitting and licensing requirements as the project moves towards detailed design. Option one scores best in terms of the safety criteria, mainly as it provides the best level of segregation between the facilities for the large vessels and the facilities for the smaller passenger vessels. All options score the same against the economy criteria as they all aim to improve reliability and this would have a positive impact on the wider economy. Options 5 and 6 score best overall against the integration criteria as the passenger services are provided to the north of the site and closer to onward travel. And lastly, options 3 to 6 score best for the accessibility and social inclusion as they provide more direct connectivity for passengers. The table shows that overall, all of the options scored positively against the STAG criteria, with options 5 and 6 scoring best. From the summary table, you can see that option 1 scores best against the TPOs and second best against the STAG criteria, with option 6 scoring second against the TPOs and first against the STAG criteria. So we presented these findings to the reference group including the community councils in May of this year. Their feedback led to the decision by the project team that option six should be considered as the current preferred option for the infrastructure at Guruk. For more details on the appraisal process completed by the project team, please refer to presentation number five. So as I just mentioned, option six is the current preferred option for the infrastructure at Guruk. Option 6 provides the passenger service to the north of the site, close to the train station. It also provides the alternative mainland port berth with a new link span to the north of the site, with improved marshalling facilities to the south. There are additional key walls for berthing of a range of vessels, improved road layout throughout the terminal, parking facilities, improved passenger pavements and maintenance of the national cycle route. Option 6 also retains the existing CalMac headquarter building. Again, if you would like more detail on the appraisal process completed by the project team and additional reasons behind the selection of option 6, please refer to presentation number 5. Finally, we'll look at the next steps for the outline business case. Mott MacDonald are working alongside CMAL and CalMac Ferries to further develop option 6 in more detail. We are working on our response to the Transport Scotland requirements statement to show how option 6 meets the project aims 
and this will allow the detailed design to progress on completion of this outline business case. We will look to incorporate feedback from the stakeholder engagement and from this public consultation into this stage of the project. We are also working on the commercial, financial and management cases which form part of the OBC. These will outline how the project should be procured, how we expect it will be funded and how it will be managed. These cases consider the life of the project from completion of the OBC to detailed design into final business case, procurement, delivery and into the operation of the preferred option. The OBC report will provide details on all information described in this presentation and it's due to be submitted to Transport Scotland by the end of the year. We are looking for your feedback on the process, on the options developed and the current preferred option. If you could please complete the Q&A at the end of this presentation. Your feedback and views will be taken into account as we refine the preferred option and finalise the OBC report. We are aiming to present the final report to the reference group before submitting it to Transport Scotland later in the year. On behalf of CMAL and Mott MacDonald, thanks very much for taking the time to view this presentation.